This is a preview video for an unreleased game. All game components shown in this video are prototypes and may not be fully representational of the final product. Hello and welcome to the Cardboard Dungeon. My name is Pat, and in this video I'm going to be giving you a quick look at an upcoming game that I'm pretty excited about. Giga Robo is a board game of tactical combat between giant robots for two to four players from designer Alex Cheng. If you're a fan of Gundam, Robotech, Voltron, or any of the myriad other giant robot anime out there, then Giga Robo is a game you'll want to check out. This video will give you a brief overview of what the game is about. If you like what you see here, be sure to check out the Kickstarter campaign for Giga Robo, which should be launching soon. The goal of the game is simple. Defeat your opponent and be the last robot standing. There's a team game option. In that case, you want to be the last team standing. The game is played on a board depicting a section of urban landscape complete with streets and buildings. During a typical game, players will maneuver around the environment, traveling either on the ground or across the rooftops, launching attacks at one another, and yes, even destroying buildings via mega attacks or by tossing opponents into them. This sort of wanton destruction will leave behind piles of rubble and sometimes create hazards such as fire and electrical storms to add even more chaos to the battle. Getting started in Giga Robo isn't as simple as picking a robot and heading into battle though. One of the most interesting aspects of the game comes in customizing your combination of pilot and robot. First, you'll choose a pilot from among those available, collecting his or her corresponding board and deck of cards. The pilot board is where you'll track your fighting spirit, which is a resource used for making attacks. Next, you'll pick a robot for your pilot to control. Robots have their own boards and deck of cards, as well as some unique ability tokens. The robot board tracks your remaining armor, shielding, and power. The pilot and robot boards connect together to form your control panel, with all of the stats and information you'll need during the game. From the pilot deck, you'll choose one pilot ability and place it on the pilot board. From the robot deck, you'll pick a single ultimate technique from those available. You'll also choose three of the robot's abilities and slot them onto the robot board. Finally, you'll build a deck of 15 cards total from the pilot and robot decks to form your hand for the game. Once this process is complete, you're ready to begin playing. Because of the deep customization options involved in the creation process, it's possible to play several games of Giga Robo using the same pilot and robot and have a very different experience each time. Gameplay is mostly what you'd expect from a tactical combat game. On his turn, a player can either gain Fighting Spirit, which is the resource used to make attacks, or gain power, a secondary resource used to activate robot abilities or boost attack and defense rules. Then he can move around the board and make attacks against opponents or buildings. Combat is the core of any battle game, and in Giga Robo it's fast, easy to learn, and robust. During a turn, players can make an attack by playing an attack card from their hand. The defender can then choose to either defend against the attack by rolling defense dice, or counter with an attack of his own. Because of this, combat is very dynamic and has a back and forth flow. Here's a very simple example of a basic combat to give you an idea of what's involved. It's player one's turn, and he wants to attack with Star Spanner Cranium Crusher. The five in the upper left corner indicates that this attack will cost five fighting spirit. The icons in the bar along the middle show that this is a melee attack with a range of one it will roll two attack dice, deal three damage if it hits, and has a cooldown value of two. The attack also specifies that Star Spanner must be active, which is one of this robot's unique abilities, and that if successful, the opponent will receive two panic tokens. Player two chooses to counter with an attack of his own and plays Atom Smasher Barrage. This attack costs five fighting spirit, is melee with a range of one, rolls two dice, deals five damage if it hits, and has a cooldown value of three. It also has special text stating that if the attack is unsuccessful, it can be re-rolled by spending power. Both players have the option to spend power tokens from their boards to add dice to their attacks, but for my example, we'll be making only the unaltered base attacks. 
Player 1 rolls 2 red dice and gets an 11 and a 5. Player 2 rolls blue dice with values of 5 and 3. Any tied values between the players get removed, so the 5s will go away, leaving player 1 with an 11 and player 2 with a 3. The player with the highest value on a single die is successful. Additionally, each die with a higher value than any of the opposing dice is considered one success. Some attacks have special effects based on the number of successes. In this example, player one wins the combat with one success, and therefore will deal three damage with his Star Spanner Cranium Crusher, and also force player two to receive two panic tokens. Finally, since player two took damage from an attack, he can then choose to either gain some fighting spirit or power based on his pilot's stats. It's important to note that I've only really touched on the complexities of combat in Giga Robo. Players have the option of creating multi-attack combo chains, performing powerful counter-attacks, and many attacks have added effects which allow for aggressively moving opposing robots around the board, sending them crashing into buildings or into other robots, which triggers environmental damage effects and additional damage. There's no limit on the number of attacks a player can make during his turn as long as he has the requisite fighting spirit to pay for them. One of the most interesting aspects of Giga Robo is the cooldown system. Most cards have a cooldown value, which corresponds to a three-step cooldown track along the bottom of each player's board. Once played, a card gets placed onto the cooldown space equal to its cooldown value. At the end of his turn, all of the cards on this track slide one step to the right, with the cards leaving the space marked 1 returning to a player's hand. This is a very cool system and it works really well. Big, powerful attacks that inflict a lot of damage might have a cooldown of 3, which means they won't be playable again for a few rounds, while smaller attacks will be usable much more often. But what's even cooler about the cooldown system is that it's used for trauma effects. Tokens indicating that a robot is on fire, or suffering from power surges, or that the pilot has panicked, are placed onto the cooldown track as well. And they'll also slide down until they eventually drop off and get removed, but they have negative effects while they're in cooldown. Fire causes damage, power surges can hold cards in place and prevent them from moving, and so on. Some pilots and robots have ways to turn these trauma effects into boons to power their attacks and abilities. So, while being on fire is generally a bad idea for most robots, one of them can turn it to an advantage to boost offensive and defensive abilities. Okay, that's a quick look at Giga Robo. We first got a chance to play this game at Gen Con 2015, where it was in an earlier stage of development but already very impressive. This latest prototype has further improved on the game while still retaining the fast, deep, and fun combat system. Although there's no shortage of tactical combat board games out there, I haven't played one yet that so effectively captures the theme of two giant robots pounding away at one another with laser swords, missiles, and fists while their pilots furiously manage the controls to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of their hulking avatars of destruction. If this looks like the type of game you'd enjoy, Definitely check out the Kickstarter campaign for more information. As always, thanks for watching the Cardboard Dungeon. See you next time.